comrades and welcome back to the Shanka Show, your best source of the unfiltered information about Soviet Union. My name is Sergei, I'm 2% Jewish, 98% Ukrainian and 100% Soviet. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. So we continue to grind through the topic of life of the Jewish people in Soviet Union and today it's video number four and we're actually going to talk about witness accounts from the Jewish person who grew up in Moscow, Soviet Russia. But before we start, I would like to make a couple of comments and just kind of try to clear uh, some things up and answer some questions. First one about YouTube demonetization of my videos. Uh, I want to explain what's happening with current videos about Jewish people. So it's automatically turns a yellow dollar, which means it's a limited or no ads. And what I mean automatically, I guess YouTube just reads the title and if it has a word Jewish, it's automatically gives you that yellow dollar sign. So your videos can't be monetized, cannot be monetized or in limited amount, whatever that means. It's not a copyright strike, so a creator can file a complaint or request a review, they call it. And sometimes it takes four or five hours, sometimes it takes several days. So all my videos so far, both one, two and three, ended up uh, being okay for monetization, but it took a couple of days. So I missed this in initial surge of views. So that still impacts, I don't say my bottom line, I'm not really um, focused on making money on YouTube, but this is what's happening. It's automatically gets a yellow dollar sign. I file appeal, then two, three days later, they, somebody like real person, not a algorithm, look at the video I doubt they watched the whole video, but then they decide, okay, it's fine, it could be monetized. So my previous three videos now got green dollar signs, so I'm making real killing on that. But as I said, initial surge of views are done. Uh, this is unfortunately how my channel works. I got, uh, you know, my subscribers will watch my video right away, and then it just drops like 90%, and it's slowly um, gains views, but not as first initial day or two. And then we had a quite a bit of confusion when I commented on the book The Millionaire Next Door. So when I commented that uh, Russian millionaires in America are actually Jewish millionaires that immigrated from USSR, and that's where confusion is. So in Russian language we say nationalist, and correct translation will be not nationality, but more like ethnicity because you know like america if you're born in america you're american but then of course you have your ethnic background that you originally was scottish or german whatever in soviet union we call it nationality it's like your ethnicity so i'm ukrainian based on my parents not because i was born in ukraine so if both parents or father or mother were jewish the person considers Jewish, not Ukrainian, even if he was born in Ukraine and grew up in Ukraine. For the same token, any Ukrainian person born in Russia will never consider himself Russian. He is still Ukrainian. So that's where the confusion is. So let's see what Wikipedia and Google search uh, says about uh, which people could emigrate to the United States. November 21st, 1989, the Lautenberg Amendment, Public Law 101 to 167, took effect in 1990 which provided refugee status in the United States for nationals from the Soviet Union and later the former Soviet Union, Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia or Lithuania who are Jews, Evangelical Christians, Ukrainian Catholics are. If you're curious about the topic of Jewish immigration from the Soviet Union uh, to the United States and Israel, Wikipedia is a great source. Look up Jackson Vanik Amendment from 1970 and above mentioned Lottenberg Amendment from 1989. There's plenty of information. I don't want to repeat it here. We need to move on. And as I promised early in this video, today we're going to study a witness account, a Jewish person that grew up in the Soviet Union, and he grew up not somewhere, you know, Soviet redneck, middle of nowhere, pound town, Kazakhstan. He grew up in Moscow, the capital of the Soviet Union. Mikhail Partnov um, was born in 1956, so he kind of like the last wave of the baby boomers, right? 
think baby boomers go all the way to 1964, I believe. So he was born in Moscow and in Jewish family. Father was a military officer and mother was engin engineer mechanic. So a standard Soviet intelligentsia family. Now we need to jump uh, further. So he immigrated with his family in 1990 to the United States on a Jewish immigration. He ended up moving to California. He has successful business. Uh, he got his own uh, like a computer programming school going on. And he wrote the book called Amerikanski Gorky, which can be translated like American Roller Coaster. This book is in Russian only, unfortunately. It's a huge book. Uh, I have it. Uh, he gave me as a present when uh, him and his wife Svetlana visited Michigan a couple of years ago. And we met. Uh, so I got his book. And this is mostly his story about life in the United States. But in the beginning, he mentioned a little bit about the life in the Soviet Union. That's what this interesting information came from. His book is available online for free and the PDF file. So if you're curious, uh, I'll post the link below this video in the comment section. So if you know Russian or you can use Google Translate, you can read this book. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, when I remembered that part of his book, when I started uh, working and thinking about this Jewish people and Soviet Union video series, I actually sent him a posted a comment under one of his videos. He has a, a YouTube uh, channel. It's in Russian language. And I asked him about uh, this part. And guess what? Remember that joke that Jewish people always answer with question to any question? So when I asked him, like, um, do you have any more additional information about your experience in being a Jewish? And the answer was, why do you need that? <laughs> I had a good laugh. So he didn't want to talk about it, but there's some information in his book that he provided. We're going to discuss it right now. Okay, so here we go. Life of the Jewish boy in Soviet Moscow in 1960s. As I said he was born in 1956, uh, so he went to school sometimes around 1963. So he claims he didn't do anything special as a, a student. He read a lot and he really liked geography, just like me. And he actually went to a city Olympics. We had those Olympiade for uh, students. I believe I went once. I don't remember how I scored. But then uh, by accident, uh, he got into the uh, school Physica Mathematica Schola. So it's like physics and mathematics school. So like it's on the top of your regular school. You can attend like in the evening uh, additional courses in physics and mathematics. That's pretty hardcore, right? Uh, so what happened, uh, He his older brother, who was seven years older, uh, he was uh, crazy about math, which is already kind of sounds right. I, I wish my kids were crazy about math, or me, for that matter. Uh, but he liked math a lot, and he went to college, which is you know Moscow State University, MGU, on mechanic uh, mathematic uh, faculty. So, Fakultet uh, Mechanica Mathematica. So, that's mechanic, engineer, and with math. Pretty hardcore. And he met there uh, quite a few uh, people who originally went to these advanced schools uh, uh, for physics and math, and that helped them to get in this college. And at that time, uh, they had about three to four uh, quite good quality FISMAT schools in Moscow. Okay, it looks like it's actually, you know, so there were regular schools and then they had schools with heavy uh, physics and math, so like going advanced, so let's put it that way. We kind of had similar also foreign language schools that they studied English or German way more than regular school. So this is similar, but only with a focus on physics and math. So he uh, went there and he had to pass entry tests, which he successfully did, and said, my life changed completely after I went to that school. And Mikhail says then uh, that he couldn't uh, put away books till like 11 at night, so he had to do a lot of homework every night and couldn't finish before 11 p.m. First couple of months, he thought he was not going to survive, but then he kind of gets used to it and actually uh, also fell in love with math. And we have this expression, you know, in English we say nerd, in Russian for some reason we say botanic, which is 
you are a fan of botany, like science about trees. I don't know why that term came up, but it's a similar to being a nerd. You're so focused on math that he actually said he <laughs> even didn't notice girls. Then after finishing that school, he got admitted to university. Or he went actually to Institut Sviazi, so that's a, a college for the communications, uh, like electronic communications. So he was so much into maths for the first two years, he couldn't even remember girls' names. They were also in his class, and they all looked the same, like face-wise. He couldn't recognize them. <laughs> this is an extreme case of nerdiness, right? And, you know, uh, trading math uh, for math, uh, not paying attention to girls, that's very impressive. So he excelled in college. He said he got all fives, which is A's except he uh, struggled uh, to do any, it's not welding, you know, like when you put little electrical parts together, you solder, right? So soldering and uh, making technical drawings, he really didn't enjoy it and couldn't do it really well. The rest, he excelled in everything. So he finished extremely well, top grades in college, you know, pretty much perfect student. Okay, so now we get into the interesting part. So he said, будучи школьником, я не понимал разговоры на тему, что евреев во многие вузы СССР не принимают. So being a student of school, so a pupil, right? So it's not college, still school. I didn't understand the conversations that uh, in many colleges, uh, Jews are not being accepted in the Soviet Union. And he said, generally, um, the way our family lived, uh, being Jewish kind of was more abstraction than like not related to real life. So they didn't practice uh, religion, you know, like not working on Sabbath and stuff like that. It was really hard in the Soviet Union to be Jewish if you uh, try not to work on Saturday, especially schools. We had to go to school on Saturday. So, you know, here you go. There's the Jewish person talks about uh, that he heard conversations in the family that in many colleges you can't get accepted if you're Jewish, but he kind of didn't click with him. Um, so he said, uh, I faced this national question uh, personally, and that was a horrible experience. Uh, so my experience going into the um, Moscow Ingenierna Fizichsky Institute, so there was Engineer Physical Institute, so he went to different college eventually. But he said his experience was настолько омерзительным и сокрушающим. It was like so nasty and crushing. So this is a Jewish person talking about going... Uh, to, and he's a top uh, student in school, right? So you think if you have top grades, any college be like, dude, come to our place. But for him, experience was омерзительный и сокрушающий. So it was like horrible and crushing. So after that, he said, I was in complete depression for three days, was laying on the couch, wasn't able to do anything. So now, try to imagine what did he experience in that college that it was crushing and so horrible that he got into depression. So this kid had a positive view of the Soviet Union, you know, everything's great, top student, and he goes trying to get in this college for to be physical engineer, you know, physics engineer. And I think it's not just they told him, sorry, you not, can't be here. We don't have any more space. And probably was some rude language used. Say, hey, you know, Jew, or something like that. So there's a uh, witness account about being a Jew in the Soviet Union. Then he continues, I wasn't able to do anything until my brother got me off the couch and took me to Moskovsky Elektrotechnichsky Institut Sviazi. Uh, so that's a Moscow Electrotechnical Institute of Communications. And he took him there because to Dabirud, because Jews were accepted to that college. And as it turned out to be, the list of colleges where were Jews were accepted was quite uh, limited. So once again, even in Moscow, you know, the cosmopolitan capital of the Soviet Union, where the smartest and brightest were gathering, even there, they had a list of colleges that would just not accept Jewish people. 
in Ukraine, it was even worse. I read uh, quite a bit about it and I heard it. Of course, I wasn't Jewish, so it didn't matter to me. But Mikhail, the hero, the hero of the story, he met his wife uh, in Moscow, but she came from Ukraine because uh, being a Jewish, uh, she knew she had no chance to be accepted in college in Ukraine. So she went to Moscow and that's how they met. So anti-Semitism actually uh, helped him to meet the love of his life <laughs> because she had to move to Moscow. So Moscow was bad, but like, for example, Ukraine was even worse about not letting Jewish people uh, to get into colleges. So, you know, the, f the first crack for him about not liking Soviet Union was experience of trying to be accepted to college. And the second was распределение. This is so-called distribution. So after you uh, done with your education, um, you being sent uh, pretty much uh, where you needed to be, like teachers could be sent to Siberia and so on. So he had a good education, right? Uh, top student, as I said, finished everything with A's and said, I started having trouble despite my good grades, I mean, excellent grades. No one uh, would take me uh, to work. In the beginning, they would shake my hand, everything's great. But then when they read in my enquete, so in his uh, paperwork, that after his name, Mikhail Partnov, there was the fifth uh, line, fifth column, right? Remember we talked about Piata Grafa? It's about your ethnicity, nationality. As long as they see that you're Jewish, suddenly like, oh, we don't have any openings. So try to get a college first, but good luck getting a job uh, after that. So now he describes the events of 1978. And he mentions, we actually had a joke back then that uh, I will trade my fifth uh, column for two criminal records. So it's rather to be uh, in jail twice, it's easier to get a job being uh, twice imprisoned than being once Jewish. So that's his uh, joke. Объявление, announcement, or like, меняю пятый пункт на две судимости. I will trade my fifth column for two criminal records. And it says, this is what uh, pushed me to start thinking about immigration. And he finally managed to get a job in CKB, Centralne Konstruktorske Bureau Ministerstva Svyazi SSR. So it's a central uh, design bureau for the Ministry of Communication of the Soviet Union. So he was designing digital devices for transferring data. And it's kind of, again, interesting detail. Out of 25 uh, co-workers in his department, 22 were he says, чистокровные евреи. So it's a full-blooded Jews. Out of 25, 22 were 100% Jewish. Two were half Jewish. So pretty much everyone but bad person was Jewish. And it's, they were looking for jobs and they finally there's one place that accepts Jews. So in the end, you had this heavy concentration of the uh, Jewish people. And I said, yeah, we uh, enjoyed working. It was fun. But there was no uh, chance we could move up or move to some other department because of like, once again, as they had the wrong word in your fifth line. If you in your fifth graph and a passport, it says Jewish, not Russian. So that could be quite depressing too. So no wonder uh, having such experience of life in the Soviet Union as Jewish, just because you have a Jewish in your fifth column in your passport. You have trouble getting to colleges, despite the fact you're very smart, you totally qualify for that. After finishing college with top grades, you still have trouble finding a job, once again, because of your fifth column and your password. So of course, uh, those people felt, uh, I won't say persecuted, but really not comfortable of living in such society. So he says when um, uh, there was a possibility to immigrate, uh, you know, Brezhnev was trying to push his uh, peace uh, in the world and uh, they made an agreement that if you let um, some Jewish people to, in a sense, it, uh, it was not immigration, it was actually officially called 
just like families get back together. So if you have uh, some relative Jewish, you know, of course, relative in America, then you can uh, get your family together. And they had a quote, 36,000 uh, people a year could immigrate. And it says, I'm not sure or why it's only Jewish qualified for that. It says because, you know, could be some Korean people or uh, Crimean Tatars. But he said, I have a suspicion that Congress, United States has a Jewish lobby, but doesn't have a Tatar lobby or a Korean lobby. So kind of interesting reference that he is positive that there's, there's a Jewish lobby in American Congress because that law specifically applied to Jewish people and uh, help him to immigrate, but not any other nationalities in the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, the Soviet part of this book is quite brief, but he still has uh, quite a few interesting uh, things, details about housing situation in Moscow for his family, which I may uh, make a separate videos, but I just wanted to give you a little flavor, a little witness account about being a Jewish person in the capital of Soviet Union and how people were treated just because their line of nationality says Jewish, not Russian or Ukrainian. Well, my friends, it's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe learned something new. As always, please don't forget to like this video and share with your friends. Uh, this uh, Jewish people in Soviet Union series actually didn't go really well for my subscription count. It's actually started dropping. But we need to cover this topic, so um, here we go. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union